Welcome to Cyprus, a beautiful island nation in the southeastern Mediterranean Sea. We began in the coastal city of Larnaca, that's the church of St. Lazarus. It's definitely worth exploring. Our walk along the seaside promenade included taking in the Venetian winged lion, gift of the city of Edessa and good views of Larnaca Bay. From there we visited the medieval fort, stopped for an overexposed daddy and daughter selfie and caught a glimpse of the Jami Kebir Mosque. Hiding behind that tree is the Panagia Fenerameni, and that's a building hidden behind all that graffiti. It's keeping an eye on the St. Joseph's Catholic School across the road. Next up was the city of Limassol, the second biggest city in Cyprus. First stop was the Limassol Castle, a medieval construction with a museum inside with all sorts of cool collections and artifacts. And an even cooler tunnel on the roof that leads to a good view of the city. Limassol has an array of pretty churches like the St. Antonio Church, Ayanapa Cathedral and the St. Joseph's Orthodox Church. We took a stroll through the municipal gardens, pretty trees and walkways with just enough shade to keep you comfortable. There is also an open-air theatre, probably for when Justin Bieber comes to town. You'll also find the Limassol Zoo inside these grounds. We decided to get up close and personal with the animals. Probably an allergy. Why not just swim it off and then catch a tan? Oh, look over there. A school of koi. So much monkey business taking place here. Hey, where's Pumba? That's not him. But home is where the rump rests. That's a wallaby, by the way, not a kangaroo. The flamingos have done well to find themselves some shade. After the zoo, we made our way to the Sanctuary of Apollo. I don't know much about Greek mythology, but I know that Apollo is a guy from a boxing movie. That's what I told the wife, and she was very unimpressed. Yeah, that's nice. How about a selfie? The view from the sanctuary is very pretty, and it was about to get even better. I give you Kurion Beach. This is actually situated inside UK territory. The British have a naval base here, but luckily we didn't need visas. We could just enjoy the views until there was a disturbance. It's stunning here, but I've got to tell you, I saw an old woman like a granny tanning topless. And then I looked to my left and there was a little boy, not two or three, probably five or six, running around stark naked. It's time to leave. Before leaving Limassol, we had one more night to capture a few fountains. In the car the next morning, we were leaving Limassol, known as Lemesos locally, and on our way to Parfos, just in time for a late afternoon walk along the promenade and the sunset. The tombs of the kings were nearby our hotel, so we went there first the next day. Imagine our disappointment in finding out there were no actual kings buried there, like as in ever. That's when we drew the line and made our way to the archaeological park. Okay, no dead kings here either, but at least it's not false advertising. Nice lighthouse. And I don't know what that is. From there, it was time for a drive along the Akamas Peninsula. This is on the western side of the country. If you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. There was still time for one more late afternoon walk along the promenade. With an array of restaurant choices, it was also the natural choice for dinner. That's the Parthos Castle lit up at night, or dusk in this case. I really should have asked how much it costs to buy that. Unlikely I can afford it, but it's good to be ambitious. It was time to leave Parfos and head inland. We were in the mountains and blown away by the scenery. The village where we stayed is called Pano Platres. When in the mountains, you'll discover all kinds of things, like remote houses. I wasn't about to go in there. I know all about Hansel and Gretel, thank you very much. Instead, why not just enjoy more of the beautiful views? My biggest recommendation is to dress appropriately. The climate up here is rather different to what we experienced at the coast. 
we're high up in the mountains and it's 12 degrees. It's cold. While driving, we also tried listening to the local radio stations. Just heard on the local radio news that there's been a serious crime that has been committed and uh, police and the National Guard are on the lookout for a white man in a hoodie. Wait a minute. And so we were in our getaway car, heading east. But not before a quick stop at the Chantara waterfalls. Now that we were done chasing waterfalls, it was off to the capital. This is Eleftheria Square, Church of Agios Antonios. Agios Savas, Faneromeri Church. Notice all the Greek flags. Most Cypriots are of Greek descent, but there is a sizable Turkish population too. The Turks occupy the northern part, although only Turkey recognizes it as a sovereign state. Nevertheless, we could not cross the Green Line because we did not have Turkish visas. Oh well, instead we took a peek at the Omeria Mosque and St. John's Cathedral. The old city really is the best part of Nicosia, or Lefkosia as the locals call it. On our final evening in Cyprus, we headed back down to Larnaca, only about a 40 minute drive from Nicosia, for one last walk along the promenade. That's General Kimon, a 5th century statesman and general. And so it is time to go home. All in all, it was a memorable trip and Cyprus comes highly recommended. Sasev Charisto, Kipros.